Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing classic shade tree mechanic work. I've been tearing apart this 78W100. I want to use a lot of the body panels on another truck. The next thing I really need to do is I need to get this motor and transmission out. Getting those out is kind of challenging, and I want to reuse this cab, I believe. So it's going to be easiest to get these out if I just pick up the cab and move it backward. Now the challenge there is, I'm working by myself, and moving a cab by yourself is near impossible. Moving with two people is hard. So what I really need is I need a tool that's going to allow me to move it. I'm thinking I'm going to build a gantry crane. I actually went to the store and looked at them. The cheapest I could find was about $800, and it was larger than I wanted. And once you're done with it, you're stuck with this large gantry crane, then what do you do with it? So really what I want is I want something that's going to come up here, go across, come down, that lets me, you know, grab onto this and lift. And I want it to be as inexpensive as I can, so using whatever I have laying around here for what I can, and then buying some, you know, hardware and parts. The second thing that I want to do is I want it to be able to be disassembled, so when I'm not using it, I can take it apart and store it beside the house or in the shed or whatever. So that's what I'm going for. We're going to build a gantry crane out of the cheapest material I can find, make it big enough that we can lift up this cab. I also am going to have to be able to take the bed off the other truck, so I need the ability to do that. But if it can lift this cab, it can lift that bed. So height-wise, we need to be able to lift that. Um, really, that's it. Those are our uh, constraints, so let's get building. You can see here that an 8-foot 2x4, if I go all the way across, that gives me plenty of height, especially if this is lifted up on some sort of a leg. I know, right offhand, that looks a little sketch, but you'll see what we're building. It's going to work out just fine. Okay, so I dug around out in the shed and I found some lumber. I'm going to use three 2x4s for each of the uprights, and then these 2x8s, they're 110 inches long. Can't recall why they're not a 10-footer, but they're more than 8 foot. They're more than enough length to go across the distance of the truck. So these two sandwiched together will be the header that goes across. So basically we have three that come up, then the two bites come across, and then three more come down. For the legs here and here, I've got some steel 2x4s. You might recall that material that I used for making an engine stand. I will use those probably for the legs, and then I've got some casters. I think they're like 350 or 400 pound casters uh, that I will use for uh, being able to move it around. So let's get some of these uprights built, and it'll start coming together. It'll start making sense when I do that. And so down on this end, this will be the bottom that goes down against the leg that has the casters on it. Up at the other end, I've got it notched out like this. So these 2 by 8s will fit right in here and here, one on each side. And then all of this stuff will get bolted together with carriage bolts, which will allow it to be disassembled. I'll probably just leave these together. In fact, I'll probably glue these together and bolt them. But up here, we'll have a couple of bolts running through that hold the 2x8 to this leg. Now, you might think, geez, just a couple of bolts through here is not all that strong. I've got a plan for that, so stay tuned. Definitely longer than it needed to be, but I can cut them off. Just need to reproduce that down this and then assemble the second leg. Okay, I've got both the legs built. Next I'm gonna do this header. So the idea is the header is going to sit just like this. That leg, assume that this tab here is this. It's gonna be right here. And then we'll cross bolt it. In order to keep these at the right distance apart and kind of marry them together though, I'm going to put a block in here, another one all the way down there, and then two in the middle. 
nicely, these are the same length as this, and they're just the offcuts from here. So we're just reusing these pieces to do blocking down this side. Next up is to assemble the legs into the header and then do the bracing between the two. The next order of business is to brace this corner. We know that a triangle is really strong, so we want to make something that's triangular. I could take a chunk of wood and put it in there. The problem with that is I then have to screw it to here and here or bolt it. I think it's going to be harder to disassemble. It's going to be a real pain in the ass, in fact. So what I've come up with is I'm going to use this chunk of threaded rod with a turnbuckle on one end. I'll put a bolt or something through the header here and then drill a hole all the way through here. Then I can put a nut and a washer on this back side. So that will hold it here, and then that'll hold it here, and I can tighten it by tightening either the turnbuckle or even this nut down here. Then when I do it on both sides, the two of them are basically opposing, so it can't rack one way or the other. Okay, so if my description before wasn't completely clear, what I've done is I put in a bolt here, and that goes through this eye, and then I have a turnbuckle that lets me shorten the length or uh, lengthen this rod, and then I come down here, and I have this nut on the outside, so that will pull against it, and then this jam nut, after I get this one set and tensioned, I run this one back down against it this way so that it can't slide. Basically, if this leg moves this direction, it can't slide that way because it's running up against this. So that tensions that. And then I've done the same over on this side. Again, I use threaded rod, so I'm going to have to cut these things to length, but I've got to cut a bunch of these bolts still anyway. Now that I have this part of the gantry built, the uprights and the cross beam, really I'm going to put these legs together. I've got some ideas on how I can do this hoist, but the reality is the hoist, I want to be able to uh, adjust it and change it up. I'm not going to tr use a chain hoist, I'm going to try a winch up above, but the reality is you could use either one on this, and I'm going to design it so that my lift mechanism can be detached or attached just to this outside frame. So really what I want is I want to get these legs built so I can roll it out above the truck, make sure everything works, and then we'll worry about doing that. So let's get to work on these legs and show you how those are going to hold and be strong enough to not fold over. Now I'm going to drill a couple of holes. These are for eye bolts that hold the upper part of the guy wires that come down to the leg this way and this way. So one will come up, one will go down. My original plan for these legs was to take a couple of 2x4s, put them, you know, like this, sandwiched uh, together on the ends, and then have the wheels in between so you could run an axle in between so you didn't have any, you know, side loading on the wheels. And that would allow it to roll forward and back and give us pretty good strength. The one thing I didn't understand exactly was how I could drop the legs from the gantry down into the middle of this and have it support and the other problem is, I don't have any more 2x4s laying around. I do have these steel 2x4s, however. I used some of these for building an engine stand, but I've got a couple of them left, and so I'm going to use these instead. An interesting thing about steel versus wood is this is a 2x4, and it is actually 2 inches by 4 inches, not a 2x4 that is 1.5 by 3.5. So really it's going to be simple. 
I'm going to cut this to length. They're a little bit longer than I want. The general idea is on the top side in the middle, I'll have some sort of a box that is four and a half by uh, three and a half. And that'll allow those three two by four legs from the gantry to drop down in there. And then on each end, on the underside, I'll put these wheels. Pretty simple and straightforward. So I'm going to get this thing cleaned up, fabricate some sort of a box here, then put on the wheels, and then we're actually going to do guy wires effectively that come from somewhere out here, maybe all the way out at the wheel, haven't decided yet, up to the legs that will provide, again, that nice strong triangle to help the upright from doing this thing. It'll stay straight up and down once we've tensioned those. So, let's get this cleaned up, fabricate a box, and get those wheels attached. This is some 1x2. I'm going to cut two lengths, so here and here, for the ends of the pockets, and then I'll box it in this direction. I'll box in the ends with this quarter inch by two inch flat bar. So I have to measure it out, make sure that that'll fit down in there and tack it together. But then this will mount here. I'll do two of those, put it in the center, and then that post drops right down in here. So what we'll do is we'll use this square as a jig. Just bring this down weld these together, so we'll clamp it and then weld it together, flip it over so we can get this piece on here, and then we'll go mark it out and measure it, but in theory that should just go right in there. Weld together, be nice and square, and it'll fit right on that uh, upright post. All right, so we have to fit three in this direction. All right, let's go over and test fit it on that post. If it works, we'll finish weld it, and then we'll attach it to the leg and uh, do the next one. Well, I went back and finished welded this and of course forgot to hit record, so whatever. The key is that this fits all the way in. And three of them fit this direction. Might be a little tight because those sandwiched might not be exactly right, so if they're off just a little bit on that uh, post, It'll be a little bit tough to go down in here, but the reality is, this is steel, that's wood, this is going to win. So I'll just drive it in. The next one I might make a little bit looser, but the reality is, I want a pretty snug fit there, so I'm not too concerned about that. Let's go attach this onto the leg, and then build the other one. Simple enough here. There's a center line on this lower box, and I did a center line on this piece. I just line them up right here, make sure it's parallel on these edges, and I'll just weld it in place. Not the prettiest weld in the world, but it'll hold, and I'm not a professional welder, so it's just for me. Okay, now that I have this box on the top side of both of them, I need to put the wheels on just like this. It'll allow it to roll forward and back. These are not casters, these are just fixed wheels, so I don't really want the whole thing to be able to turn this like this. I don't want it to rack. I want it to just move forward and backward. Just need to mark these out, drill some holes, put in some bolts and uh, lock nuts on the inside. All right, I've got the holes for the wheels in. Before I do any painting or finishing, there's one last piece I need to put on this. So on the top here, out by the wheel, but not quite this far out, I need to put an eye, and this will be attached to a guy wire that runs from here 
up to an upper part of that upright. So this will keep that upright from doing this. There will be one on each side. And then I'll use steel wire or steel rope to go from these to an eye up on that upright. I'll use some sort of a carabiner or a clip that allows me to remove it. Again, we want to be able to disassemble this. And then we'll put a turnbuckle in that allows us to uh, tension it, make sure that it's nice and tight. But let's get holes for these in here. That'll go in there like that. And we'll put a lock nut on down here. Probably with some washers, of course. Okay, now that we've got these legs assembled, the hardest part is going to be attaching these to the uprights. Alright, so we got one leg on. Next I'm going to do a guy wire from here down, from here down, get that stabilized, and then move to the other side. I'm going to use this 3 16 wire rope for the guy wires. This is more than strong enough for what we're doing. Pull it nice and tight. We'll connect the top of the cable here with a turnbuckle that just has a hook and then this loop. So we'll do another loop of that cable with a thimble right here. Because it's going to be difficult for me to get the exact right size and clamp down that uh, cable stop, the aluminum one that we used on the other side, I'm just going to use this style up here. So this is a different kind of stop. I have to open this thimble up just a little bit in order to fit onto that eye. I'll use a set of chain pliers. That opens it. Then I use the other side of the pliers to close it. We want to make sure we get it as tight as we can and that that quick link at the bottom is, you know, facing up. We don't want it getting bound up down there. Worth mentioning, make sure the turnbuckle is loose at this point so you have some adjustment still left for it. Okay, we've got this on. You can see it's got a bit of a tail on there. I can cut that off later, cut it and wrap it with something so it doesn't have a bunch of you know sharp edges that'll cut you, but I'm going to worry about that later. The other thing that we have to do is put the other one on, but notice this one's a little slack. That's fine. Once we get the other one on, we can tighten up those turnbuckles and make sure this is square and get everything aligned. The nice thing about this type of a clamp up here is if we find out that we've run out of adjustment, we can undo it and pull some more cable through and try to tighten this up. Now I'm going to go do this other cable, get the other leg on, do those two cables, then we'll be set up. And there you have it, one gantry complete. I still have to do the attachment of the winch, which is going to sit right up here and uh, passed down below to give me uh, all this space here as usable. But it could be used, if I was pulling like an engine, I could use a chain hoist underneath no problem at all. I think I'm into this about, eh, I don't know, two weekends of work and about $250, give or take. It's hard to say exactly because I had a bunch of this stuff on hand. You could probably find some of this stuff used, that kind of thing. So I think you could make this, especially without the winch, sub $300, no problem. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.